Howdy folks, it's Jeff Camarda, this time with a piece called The Magic Recipe for Spectacular Stock Market Success, I ask. Those of you still seeking the magic recipe to spectacular stock market success, boy have you not come to the right place. Well, come to think of it, maybe you have, if the past is any guide. As Jimmy Buffett, or may I dub him the Oracle of Kiyoweso, once said, indecision may or may not be my problem. He also said, come to think of it, that the best navigators are not sure where they're going until they get there, and then they're still not sure. That said, strap in, let's spin the golden compass and see where it leads us. While barkers of get-rich-quick scripts, surefire trading strategies, secret market timing decoders, and or other oracular forecasting methods abound, there is scant to no hard evidence that any of that works with more than flash in a pan, now you see it, now you don't, Shazam style consistency. Which of course is another way of saying you may win a few hands, amigo, but if you stay in that seat long enough, the house going to take all your money. For those who can tolerate the get or stay rich slow approach, academic research and the historical markets record have some remarkable insights. The first news flash is that diver diversification works to reduce risk and target higher returns. Spreading your bets over many plays increases the odds of getting big winners and decreases the chances of, of a few concentrated bad bets blowing up your chip pile. 20 positions, stocks for instance, is widely considered a minimum level of diversity. More is better. Mutual funds, ETFs, and other packaged investment products, of course, offer built-in diversification well beyond this level. Now, diversifying into different types of markets, asset allocation, magnifies the benefits of diversification. Frequently, different types of markets move in different cycles. For instance, there have been significant stretches where non-U.S. stocks have beaten their domestic cousins and vice versa. Having a piece of each and many others steepens the odds of getting some winners and avoiding lo uh, losing the ranch on big losers. Funds, mutual and ETF, offer great ways to get the first kind of diversity while asset allocating. Beyond this, there are a number of techniques that have proven, proven to work at somewhat reliably enhancing investment returns. Proven, of course, in the social science world really just means there's substantial evidence that such a pattern persists. It's never a guarantee like, for instance, the hard science proof that an unrestrained object exposed to gravity field and sufficient distance will go splat on the sidewalk. That's pretty inevitable. Heck, they're not even proven like the casino math that if you play long enough, the house will always win. But still, the evidence is strong and very compelling that the techniques are prudent ways to bet your investment well-being on. So here, dear investors, are the not-so-new investing pearls of the ages. Let who hath eyes see, and she who hath, hath, she who hath coined insert. Over the long term, stocks way outperform bonds. Stocks are more volatile, value bounces more, but clearly more profitable if you can hang on and not have to sell or, or, or not freak out and, and sell at the worst possible time. This is especially important for retirement planning where poppycock, drib, poppycock dribble, like you should have 100 minus your age as a percentage invested in stocks, can really mess with your head and screw up your returns. Number two. Over the long term, up and coming small cap stocks do way better than large caps. Way better. Really, really much better. The trick, of course, is to be well enough diversified that the inevitable grease spots don't absorb too much of your capital. It takes a while sometimes. Again, it's not every, you know, every year they do better, but over the long term of your investing life cycle. Number three, value investing, buying good companies at cheap prices works. The skinflint mentality has paid handsome premiums over the decades. Growth has trounced value in the decades plus since the Great Recession. It's been lately doing a lot better, in other words. That's quite true. But is this time really different, or is value is value kind of due? You know, to have its uh, to have its day. Da data hounds and students of financial history are likely to go attending in the latter camp. If this is right, value could represent an incredibly good buy right now. Uh, in other words, if you look at the long-term uh, returns and do the research, value over the long term has been a much, much better play and has won most of the time. Lately it hasn't, 
but maybe it's time to take advantage of that and, uh, and be invested in value as Kumar does. Number four, profits matter. To chattel and misquote the young Bill, Qu Bill Clinton, it's the bottom line, stupid! Profitable companies make more profitable investments. This is so axiomatic, but often overlooked, as to avoid further keyboard pounding. Now, it's obvious, right? You want to invest in companies that are profitable. Unprofitable companies don't have much of a future and certainly are not going to turn very much to you. So just make sure to be very, very careful um, and looking at these rules, but uh, profitability, if you can buy profitable companies cheap, should pay off well in the long haul. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It was a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, scattered. Uh, I think if you read it uh, in the email or a newsletter, it'll be a little clearer. I certainly enjoyed writing it and reading it to you. And until next time, this is Jeff Kamara. Thanks for watching.